Today I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't buy a Porsche. As much as owning a Porsche is a dream, perhaps it's not right for everyone. To figure out if you should or shouldn't purchase a Porsche, we'll use these cups. Whichever cup has the most fluid is going to let us know. Porsches are known as fast cars. Sure, some aren't fast by today's high standards, but even the slowest Porsche can carry enough speed to get you into plenty of trouble. The thing isn't just that it is capable of high speeds, but Porsches are so confidence inspiring that they beg you to drive just a bit quicker. Because of this, if you don't pay attention to your speed, it's quite easy for a police officer to pull you over and let you know exactly how quick you're going on a nice piece of paper. In some of the fastest models, you could quickly find yourself in a position where going directly to jail is likely. To keep from being forced into making license plates, follow the advice of my lawyers and save your racing for the track. So we'll add some fluid into the don't do it cup. Practicality and high speed don't often go together. Sure, vehicles like the Panamera, Kion, and Macan offer great performance in a practical package. But what if your dream is a pure, Porsche sports car, and you need to convince your significant other into that purchase. Fortunately, Porsche sports cars are pretty practical in general. The Boxster has two trunks, and the Cayenne has a frunk and a hatchback. The 911 has a good sized frunk and back seats that are usable for small children or for extra storage. Back when I had a Porsche 944, I even put an entire dresser in the hatchback with the rear seats down. Because of this, we'll put some fluid into the Do It Cup. Perception can hold you back from Porsche ownership. Specifically, the perceptions that others might have about you if you drive a Porsche. Because even if you leverage depreciation and buy a 20-year-old Porsche 911 like this one that costs you less than a new Honda Civic, many people will think you paid much more and may treat you differently and not necessarily in a good way. For example, you may not want to drive your Porsche to work as some bosses may take this into account when you ask for a raise. So we'll put a bit more in the don't do it cup. When you choose a car, there's only one way to know if you chose the right car. When you walk away, do you find yourself looking back? The sculpted lines of a Porsche may not always stand out the same way that a Lamborghini does, but they are beautiful understated sports cars. I know even with my first Porsche, a $200 924, for the time I was able to drive it before I moved on to a 944, that I would always look back after driving it. In fact, I find that I have looked back at each Porsche that I've owned. So we're gonna put a little bit more in the do it cup. When new, all Porsches are expensive. While there is a depreciation curve and a window of time when they tend to be less expensive before the prices rise again, this doesn't mean that keeping them on the street will be any cheaper. While you can keep prices down if you do as much maintenance as possible yourself, for many that just isn't an option and you need to be prepared for an average labor cost of about $170 per hour in the United States. So something like replacing a water pump and a thermostat on a modern Porsche can quickly get in the $1,000 range versus a few hundred dollars if you work on it yourself. Of course, it costs to be cool, so the maintenance is part of the price of admission. If you spend significantly more on the car and purchase new, then you don't have to worry about major repairs while under warranty. Of course, you'll need to make sure to keep up on scheduled maintenance to avoid voiding your warranty. But for those of us that choose to let someone else take the depreciation hit and purchase a used model, then paying a bit more for a well-maintained example and getting a pre-purchase inspection from a mechanic that you trust and knows the Porsche model well can save you a ton of money in future repair bills. But because of the potential cost of maintenance, we're gonna put a bit more in the don't do it cup. There's one main reason to buy a Porsche and that is the drive. Having been in older and newer Porsches, including their entire sports car lineup and cars like the Panamera, they all offer a pleasant driving experience. On the road, they are very capable driving around town, but on the track, you can really see what they can do. The connection with the car, the feel of the road, the ability to pass slower traffic and take turns much quicker than most other cars. It is something that you have to experience to fully understand. But if you have, then you know. And because of that, more goes in the do it cup. Now we're all tied up, but for me, the drive outweighs some of the negatives. So I add a bit more to the cup for me. But you have to decide for yourself and the best way to know is to drive one. Many will love it, but plenty others just don't get it. If you are one of those, then you shouldn't buy a Porsche. But for me, ownership has never tasted so sweet. The thing is that many people dream of owning a Porsche 911, but ownership isn't all rainbows and unicorns. So check out this video to find the ugly truth of Porsche 911 ownership.